Well, welcome. Um, I was saying to Claire, I wasn't going to ask you about the goal. Okay. <laughs> Just because I was watching the scores yesterday and I was going, where are you? We finished second there. Nice one. Yeah, because I was just I just caught a bit during the day. I wasn't actually watching. Yeah. That was um, that was was that un, unexpected to do um, No, I mean we, we we played relatively well. I've been playing better since I've had time off. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, we played. We had a good and there was good, good weather. weather. Yeah, yeah, well, good weather. breezy out there. It's like a four club window. Yeah, yeah. It's nice. Well, let's say congratulations on everything. It was quite funny. About two weeks ago, I spoke to Vincent Tarantino um, mm -hmm. for Kill Bill, and I was just again saying to the guys here that I just need John Travolta, and then I've got Pulp Fiction. <laughs> <laughs> as well, just to get the triumvirate. Yeah. Yes, yeah, then I'm done. Well, actually, you might as well, then, then it would be perfect. But uh, as I say, it's, it's been, you're saying that you've had a lot of time off, but um, your career has sort of gone as snowball, certainly, um, in the last decade, probably more than any other part of your life. I mean, mm -hmm. do, you, do you feel sort of a pressure on yourself now that you, because obviously everybody is wanting to include you in their movies, is there a point that you sort of going, well, hold on, you know, this is something you've always wished for probably you know, your entire life, but does it, um, get, does it get a bit much? Not at all, really. Um, there are a lot of offers, yes, but it's still um, important that uh, I don't just take jobs because of money, number one. Uh, that um, there's a standard that I have for myself uh, that I think audiences have come to accept and expect in a certain kind of way that um, I look for when I choose stories, when I choose characters. Uh, and it's a lot more difficult than it used to be just because I used to go to auditions and I took the jobs that that away. So now the choices uh, are are important. Mm -hmm. So out of the uh, what, I don't know, probably about six, seven scripts a week, as many as that. Yeah, over the course of a month, you know, maybe three of them meet that criteria. Mm -hmm. So, because I mean, how do you go about choosing that? Because I mean, I, I always think to myself, you you look at so many so many great actors who. Play one particular role really well, and then yeah, and they enjoy that, I yeah, guess, or they're they comfortable have, in that. Yes, and then they land up doing a whole bunch of others that you, you sort of think to yourself, how, you know, what the hell were they thinking? Because it just it just came across really badly, or it just wasn't as good. Um, I mean, it's are you aware that you know when you're reading the script, it's, it could be a great script, but there's so much at play, you know, to, that makes it ultimately a great movie that it could go wrong and it could. Oh, of course, but yeah. all movies are crapshoots in that way, because mm -hmm. um, there's so many things that go into, you know, making it that kind of thing. I mean, there, there is no, you know, one-man show movie. Mm -hmm. uh, there's the, you know, there's the director's element, mm -hmm. and there's the rest of the cast, mm -hmm. uh, then there's the, the crew, then there's the producers, whether they're intrusive or not intrusive, you know, there's certain kinds of producers that are very hands-on, mm -hmm. and there's certain kinds of producers that just... Yeah, just you know, to get out of the way. Yeah. Uh, so there are a lot of things that go into that. Mm -hmm. And that's what makes movies an interesting sort of crap shoot. Mm -hmm. uh, and then once you're done with them, you know, they go into an editing room and God only knows what will happen when they come out. Yeah. Uh, uh, and that depends too on the director and the strength of the director and the producers mm -hmm. sometimes. You know, there are certain producers that want to do their cut. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, because, I mean, that's the thing. It's, it's, it's your... It's you that's being kind yeah. of spliced and moved about, and you're sort of thinking. Yeah, it's, it's like you, you could you could perform a scene and think, well, that was a perfect scene. Oh, exactly. And then you see it in the end, and you go, but it didn't it didn't encompass everything that. Yeah. You know, that or they use a scene that was not the perfect scene. Yeah. They used the one that wasn't so perfect. Yeah. And, you go, and there's not a damn thing you can do about it. Yeah. 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 But. During the course of your career, I guess, and I guess as you gain. A certain amount of power in what you do. Uh, you learn certain things about doing this business, uh, and certain directors know that they only shoot the stuff they need, so that no matter who tries to cut the film together, they, they have to cut the film that yes. they got. Okay. And then there are young directors that you know 
was going through every lens in the box and so every minutes. angle and you know and yeah was, yeah was sitting there looking at them going yeah okay, okay. <laughs> you know? yeah. yeah so I, so now we're shooting hidden features for, for the uh, DVD right yeah because <laughs> that's and that's probably know. it you see yeah. that, that's gonna be the DVD that's yeah, yeah. and then straight, they don't realize that at DVD. some point if the producers don't like the film they go in there and they cut it themselves yeah you know? wow that's not the film I made yes said, well. You did kind of shoot that film because mm -hmm. you shot all of the stuff. All this yeah. stuff. And it is it's so a special name on it. Yeah. They had a chance to do that because uh, you didn't you didn't know enough not to shoot it. But yeah. I knew enough not to yes, you know, to try it another way because you said, No, this time yeah. let's try it this way. Uh, no, it's, I don't want to do that. It's political. It's actually very political when you think about it because you're thinking about yourself and how you're portrayed yeah. also just trying to make the whole thing work because if it doesn't work yeah, you know, what, so. of course. And then they go, well, okay, we'll compromise. We'll, we'll shoot one your way and we'll shoot one my way. Uh -huh. go, well, then you no, might as well just That's not going to happen. No, no. If I do it my way and you like my way in this scene and then we shoot your way and my way in the next scene, and there, yeah. once you put your way in there, then that doesn't go with what I was trying yeah. to do. So let's not do that. Yeah. Has <laughs> that ever happened that, that you. Oh, sure. Yeah. When you. When oh, you said, well, I mean, if you, if you look at all the movies that you, you know, that you, that you played in, which one don't you like? The one that doesn't, according to you, represent you? Well, I won't tell you which one it is, uh, because people really love that movie. Uh, I look at it, and I'm kind of like, eh, right. you know, but people love it, and they bought it, and they watched it, and people are always coming to me, oh, God, I love it so much. Yeah. And I often think, wow, that movie had been done the way it should have been. Yeah, done. people yeah. would have loved it a lot more. Uh, um, and you know, that's one of those kind of things where I fought the whole movie for the sure. And I mean, I have a very short list of directors that I want with again. Okay. <laughs> yeah, which is which is important. Now, yeah. a movie like SWAT, I mean, that comes along, and you've done a lot of action movies in your career. Mm -hmm. This one's quite extreme. Well, it's. It's 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 actually just a straight ahead kind of you know good guys versus bad guys cops and robbers movie mm -hmm. that Hollywood used to make yes and I used to go and see when I was a kid and yeah. my friends and I would go home we pretend to be those guys yes. and we yeah. chase each other and shoot each other yeah. and yeah. the whole thing so it's kind of like an opportunity to kind of fulfill that childhood fantasy mm -hmm. and put on the costume and have the big guns and mm -hmm. chase the bad guys yeah so it was great fun yeah and that's what I perceived it as and that's what it turned out to be is, is that what you're sort of how you would describe your career now because you're in a place that you I mean if you stop working tomorrow it would be okay mm -hmm. you work now because you choose to work so you can be selective and you can yeah you, know, you can pick the roles more carefully but are, are you having more fun now than so sure I am um, but in, in the midst of, of, of choosing things that I want to do um, I never sit at home and and try and find what my agents or managers consider uh, this is the Academy Award for uh, the role. Because uh, I don't look at them that way. I yeah. always know that I mean, there's so much that goes into that so, political kind of yeah. quagmire. Yeah. That I don't think about it. Uh, so, this will be fun to do. This will be a great challenge. But there's also the cinematic history things that I enjoyed as a kid. That's why I went to the movies and the things that you know, kind of made me. Yeah, have goosebumps. Yeah, and laugh yeah. And do all those things that yeah. I see and read, or sometimes want to do, that I still want to be a part of. Yeah, um, it's kind of like doing Star Wars because that's yes. my kind of Errol Flynn kind of remembrance of swashbuckling. Mm -hmm. and it just happens to be in outer space. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, I still want to do like a really great horror movie just because I saw so many of them. Exactly, up. And what they did. Yeah. I mean, in a way, it's you're playing the role of sort of a um, someone who's trying to preserve. What made what made what me makes, go to the and movies, what, and what makes great. going to that big dark room fun right. for all the people in yes. the Yeah, the same thing that made me go and be excited about being there. And yeah, all that other yeah. stuff. You know? and, and it's the kind of genre stuff that was a staple of movies when I grew up. You know, like westerns. I still want to do great westerns. And you know, I just keep looking for it. You have to wait for Kevin Costner to do another one. Yeah, I guess so. Yeah, yeah. So in the meantime, I just keep doing all the other stuff that's around that I think is a great story. Yeah. And I read things as an audience member. Yes, that's a, I mean, that's the, you certainly pick up on what you're 
saying. Yeah. And yeah. you're almost thinking for your audience, saying, well, well, if I was in this role, would, would they enjoy this much as um, Yeah. And I definitely would not do a movie that I wouldn't pay my money to go and see. Yeah. With me in. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, I yeah. think about that. Yeah, because, I mean, when, I, I mean, do, do you watch your movies? All the time. Yeah. 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 I mean, if I'm channel surfing and there's nothing else on and one of my movies is on, I yeah. watch it. Yeah. I watched Shaft last night. Yeah, it was on. Right, that's right. Yeah, I mean that. There was another great movie that was. Did, did did that movie find you? You know, did you go? Yeah, it found me. Yeah. I didn't. I didn't. I didn't seek it out. I was just kind of sitting around because I remember reading that they were going to remake Shaft, and I was like, "Why?" Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, now you know. Why, so, why do they need? need to? Yeah. yeah. I mean, how, how, how many how many movies? Or, or I mean, as you say. Movies get offered to you, scripts get offered to you, but you know, is is there besides the West and, 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 and the other kinds of movies, is, is there a particular person that, uh, that that you'd like to work with that you haven't worked with? Um, because you've worked with a lot. Yeah. Well, I mean, there are emerging directors. I I think I want to see what it's like to work with Sofia Coppola, just because I think she's got a you know great fresh kind of point of view of what's yeah. going on. Yeah. And, Cinematically, in her history, she yeah. kind of has something going on. Yeah. So I'd like to see what that is. Um, I've been in conversations with Luke Basson about doing a film in Paris, but yeah. I don't want to work in another environment. Yes, yeah. see. Johnny Depp. Johnny Depp. It's a new thing. Yes, yeah. Try that. Yeah. Um, aside from that, you know, I work with a lot of you know really great people and cool people. And I like repeating directors too. I mean, I don't mind going back to directors. Yeah. The guys that I really enjoy yeah. working with. So that's all. Is it still a challenge to you? I mean, I know it's just probably a silly question to ask you because I mean every role is unique. But mm-hmm. um, you know, do you? you know, is is it a challenge to you? Just on the basis that obviously you you now have millions of people who are fans of mm-hmm. your movies, and as much as you when you take a script, you're thinking for you know for the for the, the guys who are going to watch the movie. But is you know is it is it still a challenge to you? Because I mean you. You've done so many movies, and I'm sure you must have slotted into a mode, you know, when you're on a set and it's and it's work and it's. Mm-hmm. Well, um, a general work day can be a lot of different things, uh, um, and some days it's just kind of busy work. You just uh, kind of show up, and you know, you got to get in the car, and you got to look in that direction, and look in that direction, uh, just kind of do nothing. Yeah, uh, and then there are days when there's a huge emotional tax to be paid. Um, and that depends on the kind of movie you're doing, even in a movie like this. Yeah. And some days there's just a great physical tax to pay. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's um, or in a movie like Country of My Skull, every day you show up and you're kind of surprised because the extras are there and there's a sort of history of the truth of what you're doing that these people are wrapped up in that you know nothing about. So you kind of get caught up in the feeling of what's going on because they're reacting to it in a very visceral and, and honest sort of way that has nothing to do with what you thought you had on the train. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you get caught up in what the honesty of that is and Which, it takes you to another place. So, so. And if you have a director that's as perceptive as John Borman, then you have a very unique and kind of wonderful experience that you don't always have. Um, well, you're spending enough time there. So yeah, yeah. I mean, and as you say, you make it your business to understand the role that you're playing, even if there's something like SWAT, which is a little more, you know, probably two dimensional by comparison to sort of a heavy drama. But yeah, exactly. you still uh, respect it and oh, yeah. so you'd be able to embrace it and say, okay, well, if this were real life, yeah, you approach it in a in a in a very honest way uh, and not some you know cardboard cutout fashion, uh, so that the relationships yeah. are always honest. And that an audience member sitting there watching them can look at the people and feel something for those people. Yeah. Or can cheer for those people in yeah. a very real kind of way. Yeah. And I mean, how, how do you make it believable, really? Because, I mean, even if you, you can put your heart and soul into something and it's going to come across as big as a child, I mean, that must be, that must be a challenge. Well, the, the honesty between the real relationship between the people, especially us here, yeah. um, we bind it in a very interesting sort of way during uh, SWAT school. And most of us knew each other from, from various other places, and some of us had worked together before. Yeah. So we already had relationships. But going to SWAT school and kind of, you know, suffering through some of the stuff uh, and kind of laughing together at, you know, people shooting guns and missing targets 
but we had live fire practice and get to see who could hit stuff, and <laughs> who could <laughs> run and shoot, and kind of like, kind of do all this other stuff, and use every weapon, and yeah. trip over stuff, and we got real bullets and kind of dodging. <laughs> Uh, and, and we ate meals together and, and talked about all kinds of things. So the relationships that are formed in the film kind of pass over through real life and you see people that actually like each other mm. and, and genuinely enjoy being around e each other in a real kind of way. Mm. So the audiences do understand that these are human beings that work together yeah. and we are working together so the working relationships are very good. Uh, and in the midst of that even talking about something as contrived or as funny as a guy offering a hundred million dollars to somebody who can rescue him from these guys. In the midst of these people that you're looking at, do you believe any of them can be tempted to take a hundred million dollars to do that? Yeah. Because all these members are sitting there saying to themselves, a hmm. hundred million dollars, a hundred million dollars, or what I do. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, Especially uh, in a country like this, where sure. you say a hundred million dollars turns into, <laughs> yeah, you know, that's, <laughs> That's that's, that's, that's a billion rent. <laughs> exactly. Well, that's I, I, yeah. I might try. I might just yeah, just I might think about it. I'll get a time that thought yeah, for a minute. Uh, you know, that's a yeah. lot of money. That's a lot of money. It's, yeah. it's worth trying or dying trying to yeah. get it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Go out and blaze of glory. Yeah. But uh, when are you when are you um, flying out again? Thursday. Thursday. Yeah. So, yeah. I'm in pre-production for a film right now. So I got to kind of get back to start trying to costume. Helping them audition the rest of the people. Oh, so you, you go, I think mean, as I said, that was like my last question. Would be, it's, you've you're spending more and more time sort of on both sides of the camera. You know, sort of, I think that, that's that's clearly something that's. I mean, do you see yourself perhaps moving away from being you know in front of the camera to sort of spending more time actually directing? Or, you know, I don't like directing yeah. in that kind of way. Right. And, I still don't think it's a natural outgrowth of what we do as yeah, actors. Yeah. I mean, I've been on enough sets to know to the, how to do it. Yeah. You know, I've seen it done right and I've seen it done wrong. Yeah. So I think I could do it. Yeah. If, if I got bored doing this or if the push came to show and the phone stopped ringing and people don't want me to act anymore. You go for that. I do. Yeah. Uh, and I do have things <laughs> in development for me to do. Okay. And I'm still finding projects that I want to develop and ideas that aren't your normal studio. Yeah, that I want to do. So um, I'm thinking about that and doing stuff for other people. I got told to projects and development for other people because I can't be told to my agent. Well, let's be telling them. Yeah. <laughs> see, that's where agents, where the, where the line gets very blurry because it's like they decide for you, yet you've got to go with that. You've got to trust that space. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Thing, because, yeah, not to say that you'd mix it up, but that was, yeah, you know, there's, there's a plan. But there's this that. perception, you know, in Hollywood, if you're on the screen this big, yeah. You can't it's terrible, isn't it? I yeah. mean, just to say, the bigger you get, the you know, the quicker you could fall. But it took, yeah. it took you how many years to get there? Exactly. Yeah. And, you know, for 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 me being an actor, you yeah. should be able to work in any venue you want to work. So it's just a medium. It's just a medium. Exactly. It's another you know, way to display what you do. Yeah. yeah. So it's a good time to be some an object. Oh, sure. Yeah. I like. It. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Oh, you're very well. Thank you. Very much. Very pleasure. Thank you. And I know it's to say you wall to wall, aren't you? Yeah, generally, yeah, and I've been doing this now. Reading the script, I guess maybe two months ago, and I actually encountered a character that was, I mean, just so detestable. I mean, he was interesting as all hell, mm -hmm. but I could not find a reason that he was doing what he was doing, mm -hmm. and I couldn't find an honest way to say he felt right about what he was doing, and I just couldn't get it. Mm -hmm. I could read serial killers, and I understand yeah. why they do it. Yeah, this guy was just—I just couldn't find a moral compass for him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Even in a warped yeah. parallel universe, yeah, it's that still was not one. Yeah, yeah. And I'd never encountered that before. Yeah, but then wouldn't wouldn't you want to sort of go back to the, to the you know the scriptwriter and say, well? Where does this come from? Because you're just out of interest. You'd want to know yeah. how that character. Yeah. Well, if they get Jodie Foster to do it, just yeah. because I want to see what she, you know, yeah, how she that is. experience. Yeah. Yeah. You know, yeah. I might enjoy doing those nasty things to her. Yeah. But, but otherwise, no. Otherwise, there's like, no reason for me to do that. Yeah. So I wouldn't have that conversation. Uh, uh, God, this character would be testable. Yeah. 
Because, I mean, it's about pushing barriers as well, I suppose. Oh, yeah, I mean, you definitely got to cross some line that, yeah, that, that I don't understand. Anymore. Well, that's a, exactly, and that's scary because it means if it's at that point already, I mean, you know, when is, I mean, when I was chatting to Quentin, it was a case of saying about his movies, mm -hmm. they're not from this world because so many people say, but, you know, there's so much of this and it's so extreme and it's so, he's saying, well, exactly, because it's not from this world. Right. And people just don't get that, but it's, you know, the more shocking it is, the more reprehensible, you know, the more morally reprehensible it is, the more, say, the, the more shocking it is, that supposedly makes, in some director's eyes, a good movie. I disagree. I think less is more. I think you can say a lot more and do a lot more. You know, it depends you, on what you're trying to do. Too. Yeah. I mean, yeah. In, 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 in particular, you know, Kill Bill mm. is, is this thing that he and I talked about when we first met mm. because we're both like huge Hong Kong films. Mm. Mm -hmm. So I spent a lot of my time watching, you know, Shaw Brothers movie. Yeah. And yeah. so did he. And that's what that is. It's, yeah. it's just a straight but That's hand. it. But that's what you kept on saying, and these guys kept on going back. But then you're going, no, no, just look at it for what it right. is. Right. It's a straight ahead yeah. Shaw Brothers that, movie. Exactly. He's just yeah. paying homage to that particular and he thing had fun and doing the way they did it. And, you know, the the blood spurting and all this other stuff is. Yeah, it's cartoonish exactly. the way they did it, and it's just skeet, yes. skeet, and it's just it's, cool. it's totally unrealistic, yeah. so therefore it's not real. So it's not reprehensible. Exactly. Which is what bothers people about us blowing the kids' brains out mm. in Pulp Fiction mm. that it happened so fast. Yes. They laughed about it, and then they went, "Oh, oh. yeah, why am I laughing at oh. this?" And all of a sudden they were angry. Yeah. <laughs> and it's kind of like, don't be angry. Yeah. You know, it's okay. Except the fact that you were placed in this world with these people that you exactly. normally wouldn't be wouldn't around. Be. Exactly, it's not And they did what they do, and they just kind of kept on going. Exactly. And you kind of laughed about it because it happened out of nowhere yeah. to you. And oh, the way they kept talking about it like it didn't happen. Was kind of like, yeah. what? Yeah, you <laughs> spilled coffee on my phone. Exactly. That's you know? exactly it. That's exactly it. And they got to accept that. Yeah. You know, people don't get that. Yeah, that's true. And that's why you go to the movie. So exactly. you can experience these other things. Do it in there. A safe environment. Yes, do it there. And you it's go back to your house and exactly. live your life. And spill coffee, but that's all you do. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you again. You're welcome. Thank you.